Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. We're going to review a modal superposition transient structural run. What's interesting about this example is that it will have enforced motion. We're going to be shaking the base in the model, the base that is constrained in the modal analysis, and from that predict movement of the entire model in this transient structural run. Here's the workbench mechanical model. There's just one body taken out of a wheel sector model. We've meshed it and used multi-zone meshing to get hex elements. Here's the modal analysis. We've used a setting to get six modes. You can see the frequencies out here. Here's the first mode of deformation, and if we animate it, you can see how it vibrates. Now the base here was set to zero motion. Displacement of base, and we have zeros in X, Y, and Z. So here's how it moves in that first mode. It's what you'd expect. It's 33.286 hertz. The transient analysis, you can see, has this modal superposition input. It looks like that because of the way the project schematic was laid out, and you can see the modal analysis feeding its results in to the transient structural run. So we're using modal superposition instead of full transient analysis. This limits the model to linear behavior. In our analysis settings, we run the analysis out to 0.4 seconds, take a large number of substeps, and note we're doing two things down here under output controls. We're asking for nodal forces here. We're asking for calculating reactions here. We're doing that in order to be able to have a force reaction measurement here at the base. Back to the transient run then. It is modal superposition. And we have this displacement constraint. It's on the same face that was constrained in the modal analysis up here. Down in the transient run, notice some special settings. Base excitation has been set to yes. This is not the default, but it's available in recent ANSYS revisions. This is 19.0. This has been available for a few revisions now. We're also requesting an absolute result. So the motion that I measure out here as the thing flaps up and down will be relative to global coordinates not relative to the movement of the base. It will generate the kind of result that would be measured by a transducer relative to the global coordinate system. So we run out our simulation. Here's the deformation on an end face. The vibration builds up. Let's see why it does that. We'll go back to displacement. And note that my displacement has been based on a formula that I've input. I've given it a magnitude of 0.05, and we're in the millimeter coordinate system. So it's a very small movement here compared to the size of the body. And then it's a sinusoidal function. I've used 33.3 hertz, very close to the resonant frequency. In the equation used here, it expects to see degrees for the purpose of trigonometry. So it's times 360 to convert into degrees multiplied by time. I'm offsetting by 90 degrees. You can see the minus 90. And I'm offsetting this function inside the brackets by moving it up to 1. The reason is I want to start off not moving at the bottom of a sinusoidal curve. I start off not moving here. And then both velocity and acceleration pick up. And I drive it in a sinusoidal deformation going from 0 to 0.1 and back down again. And that's because of the equation typed in right here. So that's how I'm moving the base. It's in the Z direction, going up and down this way. It's close to that first resonant frequency, so it'll drive sinusoidal response. Let's look at it building up. Here's on the face. You can see the maximum value building up as a sinusoidal excitation. There's the entire body. 
here's a single point and you see the vibration building up because we're close to the resonant frequency. Up under analysis settings you can see damping was put in at 0.02 constant damping, small amount of damping. So the vibration builds up and eventually is capped because of the amount of damping going on. Again, I'm moving that base with a magnitude of 0.05 millimeters, and you can see after 0.4 seconds, it's heading up towards a full millimeter of deformation. It's being magnified because we're close to resonance. We have a force reaction here at the base. That's what we're shaking. We're shaking it with this displacement input down here at the base. The reaction builds up just as the magnitude of vibrations builds up. And again, that required setting the output of nodal forces and reactions in order to be visible. So when reviewing a thing like this, it would be common to track deformation at one or more points in the model, to consider whether we want to have base excitation. It's not the default, but it is available and whether we want that result to be an absolute quantity relative to global coordinates. Having done that, I get this transient response while using modal superposition. It would be common to do a modal analysis anyway, because you want to characterize a system. Having done that, if you do modal superposition for your transient, which again requires a linear analysis or limits you to a linear analysis, you can get your analysis done relatively quickly, and if you plan ahead, you can measure force reactions if you want them. I hope that's useful to you, and thank you for joining me.